The Price is Right is an American television game show created by Bob Stewart, Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. The show revolves around contestants competing by identifying accurate pricing of merchandise to win cash and prizes. Contestants are selected from the studio audience when the announcer states the show's famous catchphrase, Come on down. The program premiered on September 4, 1972, on CBS. Bob Barker was the series' longest-running host from its 1972 debut until his retirement in June 2007, when Drew Carey took over. Barker was accompanied by a series of announcers, beginning with Johnny Olson, followed by Rod Roddy and then Rich Fields. In April 2011, George Gray became the announcer. The show has used several models, most notably Anitra Ford, Janice Pennington, Diane Parkinson, Holly Hallstrom and Kathleen Bradley. While retaining some elements of the original version of the show, the 1972 version has added many new distinctive gameplay elements. The Price is Right has aired over 8,000 episodes since its debut and is one of the longest-running network series in United States television history. In a 2007 article, TV Guide named The Price is Right the greatest game show of all time. The show's 47th season premiered on September 17, 2018. Topic. Gameplay The gameplay of the show consists of four distinct competition elements, in which nine preliminary contestants or six, depending on the episode's running time are eventually narrowed to two finalists who compete in the game's final element, the showcase. Topic. One bid At the beginning of the show, four contestants are called from the audience by the announcer to take a spot in the front row behind bidding podiums, which are embedded into the front edge of the stage. This area is known as, Contestants Row. The announcer shouts, Come on down. After calling each selected contestant's name, a phrase which has become a trademark of the show. The four contestants in Contestants Row compete in a bidding round to determine which contestant will play the next pricing game. The round is known as, one bid, which gets its name and format from one of two types of bidding rounds that existed on the 1950s version of the show. A prize is shown and each contestant gives a single bid for the item. In the first one bid game of each episode, bidding begins with the contestant on the viewer's left to right. In subsequent one bid rounds, the order of bidding still moves from the viewer's left to right, but it begins with the contestant most recently called down. Contestants are instructed to bid in whole dollars since the retail price of the item is rounded to the nearest dollar and another contestant's bid cannot be duplicated. The contestant whose bid is closest to the actual retail price of the prize without going over wins that prize and gets to play the subsequent pricing game. If all four contestants overbid, several short buzzer tones sound, the lowest bid is announced and the bids are erased. The host then instructs the contestants to re-bid below the lowest previous bid. If a contestant bids the actual retail price, a bell rings and the contestant wins a cash bonus in addition to the prize. From the introduction of the bonus in 1977 until 1998, the perfect bid bonus was $100. It was permanently increased to the current $500 in 1998. On the price is right $1 million spectacular, the bonus was $1,000. After each pricing game except the final one, another contestant is called to come on down to fill the spot of the contestant who played the previous pricing game. The newest contestant bids first in each one bid round. Contestants who fail to win a one bid round, thus never making it on stage to play a pricing game, receive consolation prizes, currently $300, often sponsored by companies revealed by the announcer near the end of the show, before the showcase. Topic. Pricing games After winning the one bid, the contestant joins the host on stage for the opportunity to win additional prizes or cash by playing a pricing game. After the pricing game ends, a new contestant is selected for contestant's row and the process is repeated. Six pricing games are played on each hour-long episode, three games per episode were played in the original half-hour format. Pricing game formats vary widely, ranging from simple dilemma games in which a contestant chooses one of two options to win to complex games of chance or skill in which guessing prices increases the odds of winning. 
On a typical hour-long episode, two games are played for a car, one game is played for a cash prize and the other three games offer expensive household merchandise or trips. Usually, at least one of the six games involves the pricing of grocery items, while another usually involves smaller prizes that can be used to win a larger prize package. Originally, five pricing games were in the rotation. Since then, more games have been created and added to the rotation and, starting with the 60-minute expansion in 1975, the rate at which games premiered increased. Some pricing games were eventually discontinued, while others have been a mainstay since the show's debut in 1972. As of 2017, the rotation is among 77 games. On the 1994 syndicated version hosted by Doug Davidson, the rules of several games were modified and other aesthetic changes were made. Notably, the grocery products used in some games on the daytime version were replaced by small merchandise prizes, generally valued at less than $100. Beginning in 2008, episodes of The Price is Right $1 million Spectacular featured rule changes to some pricing games which rewarded a $1 million bonus to the contestant if specific goals were achieved while playing the pricing game. Topic. Showcase Showdown Since the show's expansion to 60 Minutes in 1975, each episode features two playings of the Showcase Showdown, occurring after the third and sixth pricing games. Each playing features the three contestants who played the preceding pricing games spinning the big wheel to determine who advances to the showcase, the show's finale. The contestants play in the order of the value of his or her winnings thus far including the one bid, with the contestant who has won the most spinning last. The wheel contains 20 sections showing values from 5 to $1, in increments of 5 cents. Contestants are allowed a maximum of two spins. The first contestant spins the wheel and may choose to stop with his or her score or spin again, adding the value of the second spin to their first. The second contestant then spins the wheel and tries to match or beat the leader's score. If he or she fails to do so, the contestant must spin again. If the second contestant's first spin matches or beats the score of the first contestant, he or she has the option of stopping or spinning again. The third contestant then spins. If his or her score is less than the leader then he or she will be required to spin again. In the event the second or third contestant's first spin ties the score of the leader, he or she will be given the option of spinning again as an alternative to entering a spin-off, as described below. If their total score of any contestant is less than that of the current leader, is beaten by the score of any subsequent contestant, or over $1, the contestant is eliminated from the game. The contestant whose score is nearest to $1 without going over advances to the showcase at the end of the episode. Any spin that fails to make at least one complete revolution does not count, the contestant is given the opportunity to spin again, and if the contestant has visible difficulty in physically performing the task, the host can assist them. If the first two contestants both spin twice and go over one dollar, the last contestant automatically advances to the showcase and is given only one spin to determine their score, this is to ensure that a contestant advances to the showcase, avoiding a potential triple over. Scenario in which no one would advance. Any contestant whose score equals $1 from either the first spin or the sum of two spins receives a $1,000 bonus and, since December 1978, is allowed a bonus spin. The contestant wins an additional $10,000 for landing on either 5 or 15 which are adjacent to the $1 space and painted green, or an additional $25,000 for landing on $1. From December 1978 to September 22, 2008, the bonuses were $5,000 and $10,000 for landing on a green section and the $1, respectively. If the wheel stops on any other amount or fails to make at least one revolution, the contestant wins no more money. The wheel is positioned on five prior to the bonus spin so that it cannot land on a winning prize without making a complete revolution. Two or more contestants who are tied with the leading score compete in a spin-off. Each contestant is allowed one additional spin and the contestant with the higher score advances to the showcase. Multiple spin-offs are played until the tie is broken. Those who hit $1 in their spin-off spin still get $1,000 and a bonus spin. If two or more contestants tie with a score of $1, their bonus spins also determine their spin-off score. 
Only the spin-off score, not any bonus money won, determines which contestant moves onto the showcase, thus, a person who wins the $10,000 bonus for landing on 15 would still lose the spin-off if their opponent lands on 20 or more. A tie in a bonus spin spin-off means the ensuing second spin-off will be spun with no bonuses available. Each spin must make one complete revolution in order to qualify. If a player's bonus spin spin-off does not make a complete revolution, the contestant must spin again, and the spin will be scored as in a second round of a spin-off no bonuses. The showcase At the end of the episode, the two contestants with the highest winnings or since 1975 on hour-long episodes, the two showcase showdown winners advance to the showcase. A showcase of prizes currently two or three prizes is presented and the top winner has the option of placing a bid on the total value of the showcase or passing the showcase to the runner-up, who is then required to bid. A second showcase is then presented and the contestant who had not bid on the first showcase makes his or her bid. Unlike the one bid, the contestant bidding on the second showcase may bid the same amount as their opponent on the first showcase, since the two contestants are bidding on different prize packages. The contestant who has bid nearer to the price of their own showcase without going over wins the prizes in his or her showcase. Any contestant who overbids is disqualified regardless of their opponent's result. A double overbid results in neither contestant winning a showcase. Since 1974, any contestant who comes within a specified amount from the actual retail price of their own showcase without going over wins both showcases. Until 1998, the amount was less than $100. In 1998, it became the current $250 or less. Topic: Personnel. Topic: Hosts. Bob Barker began hosting The Price is Right on September 4, 1972, and completed a 35-year tenure on June 15, 2007. Barker was hired as host while still hosting the stunt comedy show Truth or Consequences. His retirement coincided with his 50th year as a television host. His final show aired on June 15, 2007, and was repeated in primetime, leading into the network's coverage of the 34th Daytime Emmy Awards. In addition to hosting, Barker became executive producer of the show in March 1988 when Frank Wayne died and continued as such until his retirement, gaining significant creative control over the series between 2000 and his 2007 retirement. He also was responsible for creating several of the show's pricing games, as well as launching the Price is Right $1 million spectacular primetime spin-off. Reruns of Barker's final season were aired throughout the summer from the Monday after his final show June 18, 2007, until the Friday before Drew Carey's debut as host October 12, 2007, when the season 35 finale was re-aired. During his time as host, Barker missed only one taping of four episodes, Dennis James, then hosting the syndicated nighttime version of the show, filled in for him on these shows in December 1974. After he became a noted animal rights advocate in 1981 shortly after the death of his wife Dorothy Joe, Barker signed off each broadcast, informing viewers with the public service message, Help control the pet population, have your pets spayed or neutered. Carey continued the tradition upon becoming the new host. On October 31, 2006, Barker announced that he would retire from the show at the end of season 35. In March 2007, CBS and Fremantle Media began a search for the next host of the show. Carey, who was hosting Power of Ten at the time, was chosen and, in a July 23, 2007, interview on Late Show with David Letterman, made the announcement. Carey's first show aired October 15, 2007. Barker has made several guest appearances since Carey took over as host, on the April 16, 2009 episode to promote his autobiography, Priceless Memories, on the December 12, 2013, as part of Pet Adoption Week, that coincided with his 90th birthday, and on the episode which aired on April Fool's Day in 2015, hosting the first one bid and pricing game as part of April Fool's Day, the 2013 April Fool's show featured Carrie and announcer George Gray modeling the prizes while the show's models performed hosting and announcing duties for the day. 
On the April Fool's Day episode in 2014, Craig Ferguson, Carey's former castmate from The Drew Carey Show, and Shadow Stevens hosted and announced, swapping places with Carey and Gray respectively, who performed the same roles on the previous night's episode of The Late Late Show. Announcers <laughs> 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 Johnny Olson, the announcer for many Goodson Todman shows of the era, was the program's original announcer until his death in October 1985. Olson was replaced by Rod Roddy in February 1986, who remained with the program until shortly before his death in October 2003. Los Angeles meteorologist Rich Fields took over as the announcer in April 2004 and stayed on until the end of season 38 in August 2010. Following a change of direction and a search for an announcer with more experience in improvisational comedy, veteran TV host George Gray was confirmed as the show's current announcer on the April 18, 2011 episode. During periods in which a permanent announcer was not filling the role, a number of announcers auditioned for the position. In addition to Roddy, Gene Wood, Rich Jeffries, and Bob Hilton auditioned to replace Olsen. Former Family Feud announcer Burton Richardson, Paul Boland, and former Supermarket Sweep announcer Randy West substituted for Roddy during his illnesses. In addition to West and Richardson, Daniel Rosen, Art Sanders, Roger Rose, Don Bishop and current Wheel of Fortune announcer Jim Thornton also auditioned for the role eventually filled by Fields. Richardson substituted for Fields while he recovered from laryngitis in December 2006. In addition to Gray, TV host J.D. Roberto, comedians Jeff B. Davis, Brad Sherwood, and David H. Lawrence 17, and actor-comedian Steve White also auditioned for the role. Models <laughs> 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 To help display its many prizes, the show has featured several models who were known, during Barker's time on the show, as Barker's Beauties. Some longer tenured Barker's beauties included Kathleen Bradley (1990–2000), Holly Hallstrom (1977–1995), Diane Parkinson (1975–1993), and Janice Pennington (1972–2000). Pennington and Bradley were both dismissed from the program in 2000, allegedly because they had given testimony on Hallstrom's behalf in the wrongful termination litigation she pursued against Barker and the show. Following the departures of Nikki Ziering, Heather Kozer and Claudia Jordan in the 2000s, producers decided to use a rotating cast of models up to 10 until the middle of season 37, after which the show reverted to five regular models. Since March 2008, the models include Rachel Reynolds, Amber Lancaster and Gwendolyn Osborne who left in 2017. Manuela Arbeleas joined the cast in April 2009, replacing Brandy Sherwood and James O'Halloran joined the cast in December 2014. Carrie does not use a collective name for the models, but refers to them by name, hoping that the models will be able to use the show as a springboard to further their careers. In a change from previous policy, the models appearing on a given episode are named individually in the show's credits and are formally referred as the Price is Right models when collectively grouped at events. Since season 37, the show often uses a guest model for certain prizes, often crossing over from another CBS property or come courtesy of the company providing the prize. Some such models have been male, especially for musical instruments, tools, trucks and motorcycles, and used in guest appearances during the showcase. Owing to the traditionally female demographic of daytime television shows, along with the pregnancies of Reynolds and Osborne, CBS announced that the game show would add a male model for a week during season 41, fitting with other countries with the franchise that have used an occasional male model. The show held an internet search for the man in an online competition that featured Mike Richards, the show's executive producer, Reynolds, Lancaster, Osborne and Arbeleas serving as judges and mentors during the web series, narrated by Gray. Viewers selected the winner in October 2012. On October 5, 2012, CBS announced that the winner of the male model online competition was Rob Wilson of Boston, Massachusetts. Wilson appeared as a model on episodes through April 15, 2014. This contest was scheduled to be repeated in 2014, with auditions taking place during the FIFA World Cup break between May and July 2014. On December 8, 2014, CBS announced that the winner of the second male model online competition was James O'Halloran.
Topic: <laughs> Production staff. The game show production team of Mark Goodson and Bill Todman was responsible for producing the original as well as the revival versions of the game show. Goodson Todman staffer Bob Stewart is credited with creating the original version of The Price is Right. Roger Dobkovitz was the producer from 1984 to 2008, having worked with the program as a production staffer since the show's debut after graduating from San Francisco State University. Occasionally, Dobkovitz appeared on camera when answering a question posed by the host, usually relating to the show's history or records. When he left the show at the end of season 36, Variety reported that it was unclear whether he was retiring or was fired, although Carey indicated in a later interview with Esquire that Dobkovitz was fired. As of 2011, the show uses multiple producers, all longtime staffers. Adam Sandler not to be confused with the actor, is the producer and director of the show. Stan Blitz, who joined the show in 1980 and Sue McIntyre are the co-producers. Kathy Greco joined the show in 1975 and became producer in 2008. She announced her retirement October 8, 2010 on the show's website, effective at the end of the December 2010 tapings. Her last episode as producer, which aired January 27, 2011, featured a theme in tribute to her. The show's official website featured a series of videos including an interview with Greco as a tribute to her 35 years in the days leading up to her final episode. Frank Wayne, a Goodson Todman staffer since the 1950s, was the original executive producer of the CBS version of the show. Barker assumed that role after Wayne's death in March 1988, as previously stated. Previous producers have included Jay Wolpert, Barbara Hunter and Phil Wayne Rossi, Wayne's son. Michael Dimmick assumed the director's chair in June 2011. Mark Breslow, Paul Alter, Bart Eskander and Rich DePiro each served long stints previously as director. Former associate directors Andrew Felsher and Fred Witten, as well as technical director Glenn Koch, have directed episodes strictly on a fill-in basis. Sandler began directing episodes in 2012, and became the official director in 2013. Aside from Barker, the show's production staff remained intact after Carey became host. Fremantle Media executive Sid Vintage was named the program's new executive producer, with Richards becoming co-executive producer after Dobkovitz's departure. Richards was a candidate to replace Barker as host in 2007, before Carey was ultimately chosen. Richards succeeded Vintage as executive producer when the 2009-10 season started, with Tracy Verna Soyseth joining Richards as co-executive producer in 2010. Vintage remains credited as an executive consultant to the show. Topic: Production. Topic: Audience and contestant selection. Many audience members arrive early on the day of a taping and often camp out the night before to attend. Most have already received tickets for that day's show, although some hope to get same-day tickets. Audience members are then given the iconic name tags with a temporary identification number, which is also written on the person's ticket. A social security number or some national ID number for non-U.S. audience members is also required to be submitted. Audience members are eventually brought through in groups of 12 for brief interviews with the production staff. Contrary to popular belief, contestant names are not chosen at random, rather, the interviews determine possible selections for the nine contestants per taping from among the pool of approximately 325 audience members. Since 1988, the minimum age for audience members has been 18. Prior to 1988, teenagers and children as young as 12 were present in the audience. With few exceptions, anyone at least 18 years old who attends a taping of the show has the potential to become a contestant. Those ineligible include current candidates for political office, employees of CBS Corporation or its affiliates, RTL Group or any firm involved in offering prizes for the show. Contestants who have appeared on a different game show within the previous year or either two other game shows or any version of the price as right itself within the past 10 years are also ineligible. The show's staff alerts potential contestants, in person, on the show's website and on the tickets themselves, to dress in street clothes and not to wear costumes, such as those used to attract attention on Let's Make a Deal, another show that featured contestants selected from the audience. 
Those who have attended tapings in June 2008 noted that producers disallowed audience members from wearing fake eyeglasses designed to look similar to those worn by Carrie, a restriction that has since been relaxed. Instead, contestants will often wear shirts with hand-decorated slogans. Members of the armed forces are often in uniform. Cell phones, tape recorders, backpacks, price lists and portable electronic devices are not allowed in the studio. Prospective contestants obtain tickets by contacting a third-party ticketing operator via the show's website, which is promoted on air during the broadcast. Prior to 2011, ticketing was directly through CBS, originally via mail, with online ticket access added in 2005. The mail practice ended after CBS began outsourcing ticketing to the third party operator. Occasionally, episodes are taped with special audience restrictions. For Memorial Day in 1991, an episode was taped with an audience composed entirely of those who had served in the armed forces. Similar primetime episodes were taped in 2002, honoring each branch of the United States military, and a sixth episode honoring police officers and firefighters. An annual military episode has been taped starting season 38 in 2008, originally on Veterans Day, but moved in season 41 2013 to Independence Day, features an all-military audience, a Marine band playing the Winner's Service Anthem, and contestants being called by rank. The 2008 episode contained a unique rule in which each one bid featured one contestant from the Army, Navy, Air Force and Marines, and one bid winners also won a $1,000 gift card. As each contestant won his, her way on stage, he, she was replaced by a member of the same branch of service. Most civilian attendees were retired or disabled veterans or family members of military. The 2009 version eliminated the service member from the same branch replacing another after advancing from contestants row rule. Additionally, members from the United States Coast Guard were invited to the show. Beginning in 2009, some episodes have featured special themes with two contestants competing as teams, such as married or engaged couples for Valentine's Day and the Ultimate Wedding Shower episode. There have also been episodes with children who are minors normally not allowed to compete teamed with a parent for Mother's Day and Father's Day or grandparent for Grandparents' Day, as well as teen drivers and students for Ultimate Spring Break and Back to School. In these cases the adult player not the minor must make all final decisions in the game play, such as when calling numbers or prices. Taping Except for the 30th anniversary special, which was taped at Haraz Rio in Las Vegas, Nevada, The Price is Right has been taped in Studio 33 in CBS Television City in Hollywood, California for its entire run. The studio, which is also used for other television productions, was renamed the Bob Barker Studio in the host's honor on the ceremonial 5000th episode taped in March 1998. When Carrie became host, there was talk of the show traveling in the future. The program is usually produced in about an hour, although if there is a guest involved, some tapings will last longer because of question and answer sessions by the audience and the guest, which the host usually moderates. Two episodes are usually taped each day, normally with three taping days per week Monday through Wednesday, with one episode taped at 12 p.m. and another at 4 p.m. The program is taped in advance of its airdate. For example, the show broadcast on February 28, 2008 was taped on January 16. As with many other shows that start production in the summer, the lead time varies during the season, as many as 15 weeks to as little as one day. The audience is entertained by the announcer before taping begins and in case of guests, the guest will answer questions from the audience. After the taping session, there is a drawing for a door prize. On some episodes, all members of the audience receive a prize from a sponsor or celebrity guest. Those prizes are usually mentioned in the showcase such as a complimentary slice of Papa John's pizza, an NHL Winter Classic game puck, a couple's gift box from Hershey's or a book authored by a guest. Television and Internet viewers have also been directed to the show's official website to enter a drawing for a similar prize offered to all viewers or another prize related to the special offer such as the Rock of Ages signed CD. Some episodes are taped out of order so that a specific episode will air after other episodes have aired. Notably, the Christmas week episodes are usually taped in early December outside of the regular rotation. 
An episode may be taped out of order if a prize package reflects a trip to an event that is taking place close to the date that episode will air primarily with CBS properties such as the Academy of Country Music Awards, NCAA Men's Division I Basketball Championship, and various NFL on CBS games, most notably Super Bowl games airing on CBS since Carey took over, but other games are offered. Other episodes may be aired out of order because of game-related incidents or situations beyond the network's control. Most episodes which have aired out of order have occurred when the show is taped far in advance, but in the time between the show taping and its airdate, a natural disaster took place at the trip venue. <laughs> Production company The version of the series that began in 1972 was originally a Mark Goodson Bill Todman production in association with CBS. After Todman died in July 1979, the unit became known as simply Mark Goodson Productions and was announced as such on The Price is Right from 1984 to June 2007. Today, the series is produced by Fremantle Media and copyrighted by The Price is Right Productions, Inc., a joint venture of RTL Group and CBS. For the sake of tradition and through special permission from RTL's subsidiary FremantleMedia, the show continued to use the Mark Goodson Productions name, logo and announcement at the end of each episode until Barker's retirement, even after FremantleMedia purchased and absorbed the Goodson-Todman holdings. The show is now credited as a FremantleMedia production. <laughs> Broadcast history The Price is Right premiered on September 4, 1972 at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 9.30 Central Time, on CBS, one of three game shows to debut that day, the other two being The Joker's Wild at 10 a.m. Eastern Time and Gambit at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. The show was first billed as The New Price is Right to distinguish itself from the earlier, original version 1956-65 hosted by Bill Cullen, but it proved so popular in its own right that, in June 1973, the producers decided to drop the word, New, from its title. On March 26, 1973, CBS moved The Price is Right to 3 p.m. Eastern Time, pairing it with Match Game as part of what became the highest-rated pairing in daytime. The show remained in that time slot until August 11, 1975 when it permanently returned to the morning lineup at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. During the week of September 8–12, 1975, The Price is Right experimented with a 60-minute episode format, during what it called, Anniversary Week, the third anniversary of its premiere. Anniversary Week included a prototypical circular showcase showdown spinner wheel not used since. The Anniversary Week experiment was a success, and quickly led to the announcement on September 30 of the permanent expansion of the price as right to 60 minutes effective November 3, 1975, its start time moved to 10 a.m. Eastern Time. On March 7, 1977, the price is right moved back to 10.30 a.m. and remained there until April 23, 1979, when it assumed its 11 a.m. Eastern Time slot, where it has been since then. The format of the show has since remained virtually unchanged. New pricing games are generally added each year, while others are removed. In addition, prizes and pricing games have kept pace with inflation, with games originally designed for four-digit prices of prizes most often cars to be adjusted to allow for five-digit prices. While the set has been redesigned and upgraded, the show maintained a similar aesthetic element from its premiere in 1972. In season 36, CBS began offering full episodes of the show available for free viewing on the network's website. The show also began broadcasting in high definition with the price as right $1 million spectacular primetime specials the normal daytime version continued to air in 4 to 3 standard definition. The show made the full transition to HD broadcasts beginning with season 37. During the weeks of September 28, 2009, September 20 and October 4, 2010, two new episodes aired each weekday on CBS. In 2009, the additional episodes filled a gap between the cancellation of the daytime drama Guiding Light and the debut of Let's Make a Deal. In 2010, the extra episodes aired between the cancellation of As the World Turns and the debut of The Talk. The intervening week offered a second episode of Let's Make a Deal. 
The 2009 second episode aired in the time slot vacated by Guiding Light at 10 a.m. or 3 p.m. Eastern Time, PT, depending on the affiliate's choice. In 2010, the second episode aired in the former as the world turns time slot, at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, PT. <laughs> Syndicated productions Three syndicated versions of The Price is Right have aired. The first two followed the same format as the half-hour daytime version but were intended to air on most stations in the early evening in the pre-prime time slot, and as such they were referred by the announcer as The Nighttime Price is Right. Topic. 1972-1980 a weekly syndicated version debuted the week after the daytime show and continued to air until September 1980. It was distributed by Viacom Enterprises, which had started as the syndication arm of CBS. When Mark Goodson devised the revival of Price for the 1972–73 season, it was intended for a nighttime broadcast under new rules for early prime syndication and Goodson named Dennis James to host the show. When CBS commissioned a new daily daytime version, Goodson also wanted James to host the show, but CBS wanted Barker, who was hosting Truth or Consequences at the time, to take it. Barker offered to compromise by hosting the Joker's Wild, but CBS again insisted Barker host Price instead. James eventually hosted a taping day four half-hour episodes of the daytime show in December 1974 when Barker fell ill and was unable to participate in the episode tapings. The two versions were largely similar at the beginning, as both were called The New Price is Right. Some games had rule differences because of the larger budget and less commercial time on the nighttime show, for example, double prices was played for two prizes instead of one. This version retained the 1972 half-hour format for its entire run and never adopted the daytime show's double showcase rule or the showcase showdown added to the daytime format when it expanded to an hour in 1975. The word, new was dropped from the program's name starting in the second season, being titled simply The Price is Right as the daytime show was by this time as well from that point onward, and was often referred to on the air as The Nighttime Price is Right. In most of the U.S., stations carried the syndicated price as one of several weekly programs aired in one of the time slots in the hour before prime time which were created by the 1971 FCC prime time access rule, though the nighttime version originally had higher ratings, by 1975, the ratings started to drop. After the fifth nighttime season in 1977, when the contract with NBC's owned and operated stations ended, James's contract was not renewed. CBS owned and operated stations picked the show up and the decision was made to hire Barker, whose Truth or Consequences was taped two years ahead and had stopped production in 1975. The series taped its 300th and final episode on March 12, 1980 and was cancelled after weekly syndicated game shows had fallen out of popularity in favor of daily offerings such as Family Feud, which expanded to daily syndication the same year the nighttime price is right ended. With a run of eight seasons, it was one of the longest-running weekly syndicated game shows of the era and the longest-running regularly scheduled primetime version of Price the 1957-1964 run was seven seasons. Topic 1985-86 Five years later, veteran host Tom Kennedy starred in a new daily syndicated version, which also used the traditional half-hour format and was syndicated by the television program Source. Like the previous syndicated series, this version had a slightly larger budget than its daytime counterpart. A perfect bid during the one bids won that contestant a $500 bonus compared to $100 awarded on the daytime show during the same period. This bonus would permanently carry over to the daytime show in 1998. This version used the same models as the daytime show as well as announcer Johnny Olson, who as noted above died during the season. Unlike the daytime series, which employed a series of guest announcers until a permanent replacement was decided upon, the syndicated series brought Gene Wood in to fill in for Olson. When the daytime series decided on Rod Roddy as the permanent replacement for Olson, he took over the syndicated series from Wood as well. Like its predecessor, this syndicated edition of Price was intended to be aired in the prime time access slots on local stations. 
However, local stations found themselves bombarded with game shows and other series looking for spots on stations in an increasingly crowded market. This often resulted in shows like Price airing anywhere that they could be fit into a station's programming lineup, such as in the early morning period or in late night slots. As a consequence, the show would not be able to find its intended audience and the ratings reports would reflect this. Price was no exception, as many of the stations that bought the series placed it in these less desirable slots and the show could not find a foothold against the popular shows of the day, such as the runaway success of the syndicated Wheel of Fortune. Compared to some of the other shows on the market during this period, Price was a modest success, but it did not meet the very high expectations stations and producers had for the series. As a result, the show was not renewed beyond its first season. A total of 170 episodes were produced, and they aired in first run from September 9, 1985 to May 30, 1986. During the six years it held the rights to price, the Kennedy version is the only one of the three syndicated versions that was rerun by GSN. The new price is right Eight years after the cancellation of Kennedy's Price is Right, a new syndicated version premiered on September 12, 1994, hosted by Doug Davidson and distributed by Paramount Domestic Television. This series featured several significant changes, eliminating Contestants Row, a different format for the Showcase Showdown, a showcase featuring only one contestant, a completely different set and a much larger budget even when compared to the two previous syndicated runs that gave contestants the potential to win up to five times what they could win on the daytime show. However, this version found even more trouble finding an audience than the two previous syndicated series did and ended its run on January 27, 1995, after only 16 weeks of first-run shows. Several stylistic elements of this series, as well as many of its music cues, were later integrated into both the daytime version and nighttime specials. Topic: <laughs> CBS primetime specials and series. CBS attempted to break NBC's dominance of Thursday night prime time by The Cosby Show and Family Ties with a six-episode summer series, The Price is Right special, beginning in August 1986. On August 23, 1996, CBS aired an hour-long 25th anniversary special, using the half-hour gameplay format and featuring a number of retrospective clips. The 30th anniversary special was recorded at Haraz Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas and aired on January 31, 2002. This one-time road trip enticed 5,000 potential contestants to line up for 900 available tickets, causing an incident that left one person injured. A second six-episode primetime series saluting various branches of the United States Armed Forces, police officers and firefighters aired during the summer of 2002, as a tribute to the heroes of the terrorist attacks of 2001. During the series The Price is Right salutes, spinning $1 in a bonus spin during the showcase showdown was worth $100,000 instead of the usual $10,000. The success of the primetime series, which aired mostly in the summer, along with the rise of Million Dollar Game Shows, led to CBS launching another primetime series in 2003, titled The Price is Right $1 Million Spectacular. The 2007-08 Writers Guild of America strike and original success in the Nielsen ratings led CBS to commission 10 more episodes of the primetime series. This series introduced set changes as the show was broadcast in high-definition television for the first time and the set used for these episodes except for the black floor was moved to the daytime show in 2008. On the primetime series, larger and more expensive prizes were generally offered than on the daytime show. The showcase frequently offered multiple or very expensive cars. In the first 16 $1 million spectaculars all hosted by Barker, the payoff for landing on the $1 during a bonus spin in the showcase showdown was increased to $1 million. Beginning with the seventh special, if nobody had received a bonus spin in either showcase showdown, the winner of the showcase received one bonus spin for a chance at $1 million. If both contestants overbid, an audience member was chosen at random to spin the wheel. This rule was later changed so that in the event of a double overbid, the contestant who overbid by the lower amount received the bonus spin for a chance at $1 million. 
The million dollar spin was eliminated in 2008, and instead contestants were given two ways to winning the prize. One pricing game per episode was selected as a million dollar game, with a secondary objective needing to be met in order for the contestant to win the money. Contestants were also awarded the million dollar bonus if they managed to win both showcases, and the range the players had to come within was initially increased to $1,000, then reduced to $500. This format lasted one season, 2008, which was made as replacement programming. On February 12, 2016, CBS announced that it would air three primetime Price is Right specials based on its reality show franchises The Amazing Race, Big Brother, and Survivor along with the appearance of their respective hosts from all three franchises Phil Kogan, Julie Chen and Jeff Probst. The episodes featured fans of the three programs playing alongside past participants from them. The specials were filmed in March 2016, and aired over three consecutive nights, May 23-25, 2016. <laughs> Game Show Marathon On May 31, 2006, The Price is Right was featured on the series Game Show Marathon, one of seven classic game shows hosted by talk show host and actress Ricky Lake. This version combined aspects of the Barker and Davidson versions with the celebrity contestants playing three pricing games, followed by a showcase showdown where the two contestants with the highest scores moved on to the showcase. The winner of the showcase also earned a spot in finalists' row. This version was announced by Fields and taped in Studio 46. It also marked the first Price is Right episode directed by DePiro, who replaced Eskander as the director on the daytime show in January 2009. Topic. Behind the scenes episodes Topic. The E! True Hollywood Story, The Price is Right This episode in particular aired on the E! Network on January 27, 2002 as it featured interviews with former long-running host Bob Barker along with his former Barker's Beauties. Diane Parkinson and Janice Pennington. Additionally, it also includes brand new interviews with the show's other past models like Chantelle Dubé, Kathleen Bradley, Holly Hallstrom, Cindy Margolis, Gina Lee Nolan and Nikki Ziering. Infanity, The Price is Right Hosted by Lisa Joyner, this aired on the TV Guide channel now Pop on August 21, 2006 where it features a behind-the-scenes look at Price featuring production secrets, interviews with former host Bob Barker along with his Barker's Beauties. Topic. Cover story, All Access Pass, The Price is Right This episode aired on GSN on June 17, 2018 where it features a tour of the prize warehouse, bloopers, Drew Carey discussing Bob Barker's legacy and where co-producer Stan Blitz talks about choosing contestants. <laughs> Reality web show spin-offs Road to Price Road to Price is a six-episode reality documentary show aired on the now-defunct CBS Innertube from September 20 to 27 in 2006. The program featured nine teenage boys driving to Los Angeles in a refurbished mini-school bus as they leave their hometown of Merrimack, New Hampshire in order to be on The Price is Right. The episode of The Price is Right featuring the cast aired September 27, 2006. Topic. The Price is Right male model search Five episodes aired on their official website PriceIsRight.com along with its YouTube page from October 27 to November 11, 2014. The series was created in order to replace the first male price model Rob Wilson as he pursued an acting career in the online version of the ABC daytime soap opera All My Children. During the webisode series, hopeful contestants attempt to be selected as the next male model. 
Judges included Wilson, Mike Richards, Manuela Arbeleas, Amber Lancaster, Gwendolyn Osborne Smith, Rachel Reynolds, and former Miss America Shanna Mochler. The three finalists appeared on the CBS daytime talk show The Talk. Online voting determined the winner, and James O'Halloran became the newest cast member. He began appearing with the episode which aired December 15, 2014. Topic. Documentary films Come On Down, a 1984 BBC produced documentary about American game shows. Come On Down. The Game Show Story, a 2014 ITV British documentary miniseries presented by Bradley Walsh. Come On Down, a 2016 documentary about two friends who venture from Boston to Cali to crack the greatest game show in television history. Perfect Bid, the contestant who knew too much was released on October 13, 2017 and was directed by C.J. Wallace and was produced by 40FP's Productions and MK Ultra Productions. This documentary explores how contestant Ted Slauzen became adept at memorizing the prices of the prizes and products on the show since its inception in 1972 by culminating with Slauzen helping a contestant, Terry Neese, bid perfectly on a showcase in 2008 which resulted in one of the biggest controversies in game show history that was covered by Time, Esquire, TMZ and more. It also featured guest appearances by Bob Barker, Roger Dobkovitz, Kevin Pollack and Drew Carey. Prizes As of November 2009, the show had given away approximately $250 million in cash and prizes. Furs have not been offered as prizes since Barker's tenure as host although wool and leather are now permitted. Several Barker-imposed prohibitions have been lifted since his departure, such as offering products made of leather or leather seats in vehicles and showing simulated meat props on barbecues and in ovens. The show has also offered couture clothing and accessories, featuring designers such as Coach Inc., Louis Vuitton and limited brands in an attempt to attract a younger demographic, as well as backyard play equipment such as Jumpsport trampolines and electronics such as smartphones, personal computer systems, video game systems and entertainment centers. Other prizes which have frequently appeared on the show since its beginnings include automobiles, furniture, trips and cash. The most expensive prize offered on this version of the show was a Ferrari 458 Italia Spider sports car, priced at $285,716, that appeared on the April 25, 2013, episode during Big Money Week. The prize was offered during the Three Strikes pricing game. Prior to this, the most expensive prize was a Tesla Roadster 2008 valued at $112,845, featured on the April 22, 2010, episode in the pricing game Golden Road. Automobiles <inaudible> 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 Since the show's debut, automobiles have been a signature prize on The Price is Right. Most hour-long episodes have two pricing games that are each played for an automobile and in most episodes, although not all, at least one showcase will include an automobile. For special episodes, such as the 5000th episode, there will often be more cars offered. From 1991 to 2008, almost all automobiles offered on the show were made by companies based in the United States, specifically Detroit's Big Three although cars made by these companies' foreign subsidiaries or in a joint venture with a foreign company were also offered during this era. The move was made by Barker, in his capacity as executive producer, as a sign of patriotism during the first Iraq War in 1991 and as a show of support to the American car industry, which was particularly struggling at that time. When Chrysler merged with German automaker Daimler-Benz in 1998 to form Daimler Chrysler AG now simply Daimler AG after Chrysler split from the automaker, Chrysler is now controlled by Italian automaker Fiat. The foreign ownership of Chrysler did not affect carrying any Chrysler-related models. Since Barker's retirement, cars made by foreign companies have been offered, most notably Honda, which has several factories throughout Ohio the home state of Cary and former announcer Fields. Through product placement, certain episodes in 2008 and 2009 featured Honda as the exclusive automobile manufacturer for vehicles offered on that episode. 
the major European Volkswagen, BMW, Daimler, Fiat and Volvo and Asian Hyundai Kia, Toyota, Mitsubishi, Mazda, Nissan and Honda manufacturers have all provided cars on the show since the ban was lifted, with premium foreign cars almost exclusively used for games that generally offer higher priced cars, such as Golden Road and Three Strikes. Starting around 2010, vintage and classic cars have occasionally been offered as prizes for games which do not involve pricing them. Among them have been a 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air and a 1964 Bentley S3. These cars are usually offered in games where their prices are irrelevant to gameplay, such as Hole in One and Bonus Game. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Winnings records. The record for the largest individual total in cash and prizes on a daytime episode is held by Chris and Freeman. On the October 28, 2016 episode, which aired during Big Money Week, Freeman won $210,000 in cash during a playing of cliffhangers. During the episode, game rules were modified to offer a top prize of $250,000, which was reduced by $10,000 for every step the mountain climber took. In addition to her one bid prize and an additional $1,000 won during the showcase showdown, Freeman's grand total was $212,879. The record for winnings on the primetime show is currently held by Adam Rose. On February 22, 2008, the first The Price is Right $1 million spectacular episode since Kerry became host, Rose won $20,000 playing Grand Game and won both showcases, which included a Cadillac XLR convertible in his own showcase and a Ford Escape Hybrid in his opponent's showcase, plus a $1 million bonus for being within $1,000 of the actual retail price of his own showcase, bringing his total to $1,153,908. Additionally, Rose holds the record for winnings on any version of the Price franchise worldwide, shattering the previous mark set by Joanne Segeviano on the Australian version in 2005. Terry Nice holds the record for the closest bid on a showcase without going over, guessing the exact price of the showcase he was given. Nice, an avid viewer of the show, recorded and watched every episode for four months prior to when he and his wife had tickets to attend in September 2008. Nice learned that many prizes were repeatedly used always at the same price and began taking notes. Nice was selected as a contestant on September 22, 2008, lost his pricing game the only contestant to do so that episode, made it to the final showcase and guessed the exact amount of $23,743 for his showcase. Many show staffers, including Carrie, were worried that the show was rigged and that Nice was cheating. Nice later explained that he had seen all three items of the showcase before and knew the general prices in the thousands. The 743 he used because it was his pin, based on his wedding date and his wife's birth month, Carey attributed his subdued reaction to the perfect bid by saying, Everybody thought someone had cheated. We'd just fired Roger Dobkovitz, and all the fan groups were upset about it. I remember asking, Are we ever going to air this? And nobody could see how we could. So I thought the show was never going to air. I thought somebody had cheated us, and I thought the whole show was over. I thought they were going to shut us down, and I thought I was going to be out of a job." Nice later defended his actions, claiming that he never cheated, and in the end, was awarded his prizes. His feat can be comparable to the actions of Michael Larson, who appeared on the 1980s CBS game show Press Your Luck, and won $110,237 by memorizing the board sequence. Reception Awards The Price is Right has received eight Daytime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Game – Audience Participation Show, in 1988, 1996, 1997, 2004, 2007, 2013, 2016 and 2018. Topic. Critical reaction The Price is Right has generally been praised and remained a stalwart in television ratings over its long history. In a 2007 article, TV Guide named the program the "...greatest game show of all time." 
The introduction of the program ushered in a new era of game shows moving away from the knowledge based quiz show format, creating a noisy, carnival atmosphere that challenged cultural norms and assumptions represented in previous generations of quiz shows. The show's early reception was not as universally positive, as critics lamented the show's stark departure from the highbrow norms of the golden age of television. Original nighttime host Dennis James admitted that even his own housekeeper did not watch the show for that reason, but also defended the series, saying, CBS, who never wanted game shows, just put three game shows on the air, so they know they had better join the fight or lose out, because game shows have a tremendous appeal. The critics will always look down their noses, but you can't have the Bell Telephone Hour on and still stay in competition. If you want to read books, read books. Controversy Lawsuits <controversy> 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 Since the mid-1990s, the program production company and in some cases the executive producer both Barker and Richards, the executive producer since September 2009 have been sued by numerous women. Most of the lawsuits involved models and other staff members in cases of sexual harassment, wrongful termination and racial discrimination. Allegations of sexual harassment brought by Diane Parkinson led to Barker calling a press conference to admit a past consensual sexual relationship with her, while denying any harassment, explaining that she was only angry with him for calling off the relationship. Barker was widowed in 1981 following the death of his wife, Dorothy Jo. It has also been alleged that Barker and senior staff created a hostile work environment, particularly to those who testified for the plaintiffs suing Barker. Responding to the controversy just before his retirement, Barker told William Keck of USA Today, The women's lawsuits have been such a problem. I don't want to say anything about them. They were disgusting, I don't want to mention them. The Barker era lawsuits, except for one, were settled out of court. After Barker dropped his slander suit against Halstrom, she eventually countersued and received millions in settlement. Former model Lanisha Cole filed a sexual harassment lawsuit against the show's producers in 2011. It was settled in 2013. Topic: <inaudible> Plinko Board Incident. The Plinko Board is often used by RTL Group licensed lottery promotions, CBS affiliates, and Fremantle's Ludia Video Game Division to promote the show. For the promotions, two fishing lines, one on each side of the board, hanging from the side down towards the center slot, are used to rig the game so the dropped chip always lands in the $10,000 slot. After an advertisement for the show's Ludia video game was taped, the wires were mistakenly left in place for the 1 p.m. taping of the price as right on July 22, 2008. As a contestant was playing the game, three consecutive chips she dropped landed in the $10,000 slot. As the fourth chip was being dropped, a co-producer realized that the wires were still in place and stopped the chip as it bounced down the board, informing Carrie of the situation. The wires were removed and the entire segment was reshot for the show from the point where the contestant began dropping chips. CBS standards and practices allowed the contestant to keep the $30,000 won prior to the removal of the wires as well as the money won with the five chips after the mistake had been corrected. However, the segment that aired when the show was broadcast on December 5, 2008 did not refer to the mistake or the amount of money won prior to the removal of the wires. Topic: 40th anniversary. The show aired a 40th anniversary special on September 4, 2012. The entire audience was made up of former contestants. Barker did not appear, stating that he believed that he had been excluded for criticizing some of the prizes given away after Kerry became host, such as a trip to the Calgary Stampede Rodeo. Although he did not appear in person, vintage clips of Barker hosting the show were shown during the episode. Barker appeared on the show twice afterwards, once in December 2013 during Pet Adoption Week, celebrating his 90th birthday, and again on April 1, 2015, as the guest host for the first pricing game, part of an April Fool's Day storyline involving Carrie. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Merchandise 
The Price is Right has expanded beyond television to home and casino-based games. Topic: <laughs> DVD release. A four-disc DVD box set titled The Best of The Price is Right was released on March 25, 2008. The set features four episodes of the 1956-1965 Bill Cullen series, 17 episodes of the Barker 1972-1975 daytime series and the final five daytime episodes hosted by Barker. In accordance with Barker's animal rights wishes, which remain in effect beyond his retirement, any episodes with fur coats as prizes cannot be aired or released into home media formats. This includes the first three daytime shows recorded in 1972, plus most of the 1970s syndicated run. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Board games. Seven board games have been produced. One of them was a variation of a card game using prizes and price tags from the 1956 version. The second was based more closely on the original version of the show. Three games were produced during the 1970s by Milton Bradley, with contestants row, some pricing games and, in the case of the third version, a spinner for the big wheel. In the first two versions, decks of cards had various grocery items, small prizes and larger prizes. The third version simply had cards for each game that included ten sets of right answers, all using the same price choices. The instruction book specified what color cards were necessary for each round. The 1986 version, again by Milton Bradley, was similar in scope to the earlier version, with new prizes and more games, but lacking the big wheel, similar to the Davidson version. The instruction book refers to contestants' row as the qualifying round, and the pricing games as solo games. The book also instructs players to use items priced under $100 as one bids. The 1998 version of the game, by Endless Games, was virtually identical to the 1986 release, with the same games, prizes and even the same prices. The only changes were that the number tiles were made of cardboard bits instead of plastic and the cars from the deck of prizes with four-digit prices were removed. The 2004 version, again by Endless Games, was a complete departure from previous home versions. Instead of different prize cards and games, the game consisted of everything needed to play 45 games and enough materials to create all the games not technically included if the host wished to and knew their rules. The big wheel spinner was also restored, this time with the numbers in the correct order. Additionally, the prices, instead of being random numbers that could change each time the game was played, were actual prices taken from episodes of the TV show. To fit everything in the box, grocery items and prizes were listed in the instruction book and games were played on dry erase boards. A spinner determined the game to be played next, although its use was not necessarily required if the host wished to build his own game lineup, or even use a pricing game not included in the lineup. Topic. Computer and electronic games In 1990, GameTech created a Price is Right computer game for the DOS and Commodore 64 platforms and other systems to fit in their line of other game show games. A handheld Tiger game was made in 1998 with four pricing games. A DVD game with 12 pricing games, live casino show host Todd Newton and video of prizes taken directly from the show was produced by Endless Games in 2005. A 2008 DVD edition, also from Endless Games, featured many changes based on Season 36 and included seven new games, Half Off, More or Less, Swap Meet, Secret X, That's Too Much, Coming or Going and Hole in One. It also featured both host Drew Carey and announcer Rich Fields. CBS.com featured an online Price is Right based game in the late 1990s, which was plugged in the closing credits of each episode. The game consisted of choosing which of the four bidders in contestants row was closest to the price of a prize without going over. Additionally, Mobless provides a suite of pricing games for cellular phones. On March 26, 2008, Ludia, in connection with Ubisoft, launched the Price is Right video game for PC. A version for the Wii and Nintendo DS platforms was released in September 2008, while a version for the iOS was released in November 2008. The show's announcer, Fields, was the host of the computer version. 
The virtual set in the game resembles the set used in seasons 31 to 34. Ludia announced that all three platforms will receive a new version of the video game that was previewed at the Target Bullseye Lounge during the Electronic Entertainment Expo trade show on June 2-4, 2009. The Price is Right 2010 edition was released on September 22, 2009. In the fall of 2010, Ludia developed a multiplayer version for Facebook. A third Ludia adaptation, The Price is Right Decades, featuring set designs, pricing games and prizes taken from the 1970s through 2000s, was initially released for the Wii in October 2011, with an Xbox 360 and iOS release following in November and December. The Price is Right 2010 edition and The Price is Right Decades have also been released as downloads within the PlayStation Store for the PlayStation 3 in May 2010 and April 2012, respectively. Irwin Toys released an electronic tabletop version in 2008 featuring Contestants Row, The Big Wheel, a physical Plinko board with chips, showcases and seven pricing games. Jax Pacific released a plug-it-in and play version of The Price is Right in 2009, featuring Carrie and Fields. <laughs> <laughs> Slot machines A series of video slot machines were manufactured for North American casinos by International Game Technology. Although gameplay varies by machine, each feature themes and motifs found on the show, including the showcase showdown, with themes used following Carrie's start as host. Others feature pricing games as gameplay elements, including Plinko, Cliff Hangers, Punch a Bunch, Dice Game, and Money Game. Scratch-off tickets A scratch card version of the game is being offered by several U.S. and Canadian lotteries, featuring adaptations of Plinko, Cliffhangers, The Showcase Showdown and The Showcase. The top prize varies with each version. <laughs> Live casino game After the 30th anniversary episode taped in Las Vegas in 2002, Haraz and RTL Group began producing live licensed shows dubbed The Price is Right Live, at their venues, with several performers, including Roger Lodge, Newton and Gray hosting, with West, Rosen and Dave Walls announcing. 